Good morning. I'm Dr. Ashley Romja. I am an naturopathic doctor and I'm the facilitator of this class, Focused Breath. This class runs weekdays daily at 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Zoom by donation, by email transfer. I am currently in Edmonton, which is Treaty 6 territory, traditional to the Dene and Cree people. It's a good way to learn to speak, to know whose traditional territory you're sitting on when you speak to people in a group. This class is um, open to anybody. Um, it's a class that you do based on how you feel. So if at any point you get dizzy, you go back to your regular breath. You can lie down in what's called Shavasana, which is just lying on your back really relaxed, head up, just breathing normal. Um, none of this class has anything to do with naturopathic medicine. That is just my name, that's my title. This is essentially yoga, pranayama, uh, the lineage of Kriya Yoga under Maha Avatar Babaji. I'm going to not talk so much. We're just gonna go into breath, follow along. If at any point you need to just go to your regular breath, lay down, drink water, go to the bathroom, have a nap. <laughs> when you do that, this class is on every day during the weekdays. So there's lots of time to learn to breathe in this focused breath work. It takes years to sometimes breathe properly. Okay, so just to tune in into where you are, um, open the windows in your home or where you are. Make sure you're in a space that you can focus. So if you're lying in your bed, perhaps lie on your back, uh, straighten your hips, have your sacrum on the ground, where's your shoulders in comparison to your hips. Is one side of your rib cage pointing out, pointing, you know, sometimes people do this when it needs to come in and up. So just to tune in, if you're seated on a mat, I suggest sitting on a, um, a cushion. Words are so funny. Um, it just helps put your hips a bit forward, sit comfortably. If you can sit in cross legged position, do that. If you need to move around, that's fine. Where are your sit bones? Your, the bottom of your hips, are they equal? Are they both touching the ground? Where is kind of the ear of your hip? Okay, so we tune this way. I'm going to next the tune with uh, the oldest mantra, which is an OM. You can follow me. You can, um, you can simply, if you don't feel comfortable in doing this, especially if there's other people in the house and sometimes people get self-conscious with these things, um, you can just, you can just vibrate your inner channel with like a hum. It's actually a tune. Um, okay, I'm just going to go for that. Oh. 
We're just going to start breathing in through our nose and out through our mouth and just attuning to our breath pay attention to how deep it is how much our lungs are expanding just breathing breathing through your nose your mouth. Don't force it. Be with your natural breath. This is just a chin mate time. In through your nose and out through your mouth. Keep your tongue on, on your upper palate, so the roof of your mouth, behind your front teeth. Swallow, relax your jaw. If you're seated upwards, where are your shoulders sitting when compared to your ears? Raise your head again with like a ribbon, an invisible ribbon up to the um, roof and just breathing. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. We're going to start to deepen this breath, so a deeper breath in, and when you get to the bottom, you're just going to hold it very gently, and notice this place at the bottom of your breath. There's a very amazing place of peace. Feel that stillness, that peace. And then let the breath out through the mouth. And pause at the top. And again, notice that place of peace. Okay, so this is new breath that we're just learning. So breathe in. Pause. Breathe out. Pause. Breathe in. Pause. 
breathe out. Awesome. We're going to keep doing this about 10 times a week. Breathe in. Pause. Breathe out. Pause. Breathe in. Pause. Breathe out. Pause. I'm going to now be quiet and we're going to do it at our own time because this class is also focusing you to focus on your breath. So it's mind training too. Your tongue up on your upper pelvis, upper roof of your mouth. Notice the peace, the place of stillness at the bottom of the breath and the top of the breath. Those are very important places in pranayama because slowly we attune to the stillness, peace, and we bring it into our entire being so we carry it with us at all times. Okay. Breathe in. Pause, breathe out, pause, breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in. Pause. Breathe out. We're going to move a little bit deeper. Now this is called Ujjayi breath. So when we're breathing in, we're going to do the same. We're going to breathe in and we're going to pause at the bottom and we're going to breathe out and we'll pause at the top. But this time there's, there's a constriction of the throat and it's called the breath of the seashore. When you start to really get into it, you you can feel like the ocean come and move. And this is a good way to move your prana, which is it's called pranayama, right? Focus breath. Prana is your energy, essentially, um, through your breath. So this breath really moves your interior environment. Ujjayi breath is what it's called. Um, I'll, I'll show it. So, 
Uh, time at the top of your palate. Mouth together, jaw relaxed. Do you hear the constriction? Kind of like you're, like you're coming up for air almost. It really starts to move your energy. It's a really amazing breath. And you can actually train yourself to breathe this way all the time. And it really helps balance your energy within your body, your life force. is another name for prana. Okay, so we'll go this way. And just adjust your body. How are you seated? Are your abs contracted? Because yes, this is work. If you're lying down, is your hips at the same place? Your sacrum on, on your, you know, on the ground or on your bed? Where are your shoulders? Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Okay, we'll start going. Pause. Pause. So there's a sound like a moan as you inhale. And then the pause and the exhale is like a moan as well, almost.
So the breath in is like a wave coming into the seashore and the breath out is back out to the ocean. And as you breathe through this breath, the jai breath, very quickly why the ancients say it's the breath of the seashore and this giant ocean within. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, we're just going to go back to breathing normally. So that breath moves the stork. Um, which breath shall we go into next? Okay, I'm going to uh, use this breath just because I, use, I don't like that word. I'm going to teach this breath. Um, it's a very simple breath. It's, um, as far as I know, it is not traditional pranayama, but I practiced with it from a breath coach, and it is helpful, especially for simply reoxygenating the body and uh, drying out the inner channel and helping attune people to breathing. So this one's very simple and we're going to do this for several minutes and it's simply breathing in through your mouth and breathing out through your mouth. So the breath in is and then just relax like let it out, let your body go naturally. This helps attune the nervous system so sometimes people can be stressed out in the daily life and learn to hold the breath. This happens regularly and this breath helps retrain the diaphragm to just let the breath out really easily. So it's actually, um, yeah, the diaphragm is a very special muscle. So when we breathe in, it's, it's active. And when we breathe out, it's passive and it recoils. So this breath helps strengthen the recoil of the diaphragm so that we allow the breath that is within our lungs to fully exit our lungs. Now, um, again, without talking too much because this is an active class, but for people to understand, it's really important. So when we leave breath within our lungs, which happens with people that, you know, they don't actively um, participate or focus on their breath, such as a class like this, where these are people that don't regularly go and get cardiovascular vascular better, um, exercise so that regularly they're working their lungs to go like this when they're panting kind of because they've gone running or whatnot. We leave, we can leave air in our lungs, especially the top of our lungs and this is no good, no good. You want to exercise your lungs and get the air regularly moving. You don't want to leave stagnant old air in the top of your lungs. Um, not a good thing. So this breath helps uh, train the diaphragm to recoil. And um, what I basically want you all to focus on is uh, breath in through the mouth. And then let it out. You can sigh if you're stressed out. Sighing really helps remove stress from the body and the out breath. If you're really stressed, a good sigh helps a lot. Do as many as you need. <sighs> if you're sitting, you can do some active work, so <sighs> try to 
look at your spine moving. Notice if your spine is straight or not. Keep breathing in through your mouth, out through your mouth. See if you can expand a little bit more breath in through your mouth and then out. And let all the air out. And keep doing this in through your mouth, out through your mouth. I'm going to be back in just one moment. And keep on your breath, keep focus. I'll be right back. Okay, those things, every single class breathing is a lot of work. You should be thirsty. <clears throat> Another thing, definitely in this class, you should feel like you have to go to the bathroom once, maybe twice, it does not matter. I am literally talking about evacuating the bowels because breathing gets your digestive system moving properly. People don't like to talk about this. But it's so important. Everybody should have at least one bowel movement a day. Three is optimal with each meal. And what I really would like to train people into is to follow these very, very basic signals the body gives. If you are thirsty, you drink water. 
If you have to go to the bathroom, you go. You go immediately, okay? If you did not have a mother that trained you to do this when you were a child, which a lot of people do not, and I learned this in naturopathic medicine, they learn early to suppress the signal. And then people show up to us naturopathic doctors with digestive problems, constipation problems, other problems, and it's a big deal. So this class is on, you're not gonna miss out. And don't worry about that. The next thing that I really want people to focus on is if you're tired, if you're breathing in this class and then you think, oh, I'm tired, just lie down. You can listen, you can try to breathe from lying down. But we have this society where people work and work and work and they put themselves last and, and then they wonder why we are so out of balance on earth. And if every single person genuinely took care of themselves first, we would live in a very different environment. So if you're tired, rest. If you're thirsty, drink water. Even if you're hungry in this class, if you're hungry, go eat some fruit. Fruit is a good idea to eat with this class. This class is work, it gives extra, it gives some sugar, so for extra energy. It's really nourishing and nurturing to the digestive system. It um, you know, gives some moisture to the lungs. And yes, first and foremost in this class, it will make you have to go to the bathroom. So go as many times as you have to, immediately as the signal comes up. Because very easily these signals can come up and we cannot pay attention and, and um, it's not a good thing. Trust me too, you'll be happier as you um, Get your digestive system going. 90% of serotonin, your happiness hormone, it's moving your digestive tract. So back to breathing. Now let's just go to regular breath now. So let's get the class together again. So breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Said this in class before. Uh, teach yourself to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Breathing through your nose will keep your nervous system in parasympathetic mode, which is rest and digest, which is where you want to be. So many people travel life being in sympathetic state, which is basically fight or flight or freeze. And this is not a good place to be. Okay, in through your nose, out. And when you're breathing, you're using your lower abdominal and your diaphragm, okay? Not trying to bring it in through the chest like this. Okay, so expansion here. Okay, now we're going to try a different book. And this uh, was coined by a pretty famous doctor in the United States. He's an MD, Dr. Wheel. Uh, D, uh, Dr. W-E-I-L, he has, he had a magazine out for a while, a lot of people know him, he's an MD that kind of did a lot of naturopathic, uh, natural ways, and I really liked him, um, I don't know how much he's still doing, but he coined a breath called 578 breathing, and um, when I came out of naturopathic medicine school, even though I was so, uh, like I'd done years of pranayama work before school started, I paid attention to my breath, but eventually it caught up with me. It was a, it was a big program. And um, I knew I had to get my cardiovascular back into shape. Um, 
you know, I was basically in school and clinic, um, often 12 hours a day, studying 14 to 16 hours a day, six, seven days a week. I try to go for walks with my dog as much as possible, but I didn't have excess energy to like, go running and do some of the things that I would have done without such a heavy program. And so I came out of school and I could do, I could barely do this breath. Okay, so this breath is, it helps um, the respiratory and the cardiovascular system retrains it. So this is the lung and the heart. And um, according to Dr. Rio, it can help retrain anybody, even with an arrhythmia, so a, a heart palpitation or a regular heartbeat. And it really does help the expansion of the lungs. So this might be a breath that takes quite some time. Like when I started to retrain myself, it took me months before I could do this breath properly. So don't put pressure on, but try. And uh, so we basically, um, did I say five, seven, eight? Um, we inhale. I think it's five, six. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me let me find the up there. We're gonna do four, seven, eight. I think it's four, seven, eight. So we inhale for a count of four through our nose. We hold it for a count of seven. And then we exhale very slowly through our mouth for a count of eight. But on the exhale for the count of eight, you want to exhale for the entire count of eight. So basically you are exhaling in double the time of your inhale. And this is retraining the lungs. And this requires focus, and it's gonna require you to count in your head and pay attention. Okay, so everybody get ready. We're gonna inhale for four. Hold your inhale, your tongue at the top of your mouth, at the roof of your palate, behind your front teeth can be pressing on your front teeth. Hold it for a count of seven, and then we're going to exhale through our pursed lips for a count of eight. Okay, so inhale for four. Hold for seven. Exhale for eight. Now I'm going to do it with you. And on that eight, you're really pushing out all the breath and it can hurt, okay? When you're holding it for seven, like when I was retraining myself, I thought my lungs were gonna burst. This is how it's retraining your lungs and your cardiovascular system. Okay, so inhale for four. Hold for seven. Exhale for eight. I'm not going to talk so that I can do this with you, okay?
I'm going to give a little secret. We're at the inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. Get so in tune with yourself that, yeah, you're counting, but you're, you're, you're feeling your heartbeat, so your heartbeat is counting for you. So you've got your inhale, but you're feeling your heart. Four, hold, heartbeat. Seven. Very cool, hey? Eight. Exhale. Heartbeat. Okay. Okay, so inhale for four. Inhale for four. Hold for seven. Exhale for eight. Okay, just back to normal breath. Perhaps notice how expansive your lungs are now. Inhale for four. Exhale. What is your breath when you're inhaling? Can it come up to your third eye? Right. 
We're going to finish this class with a detoxifying breath. We did it yesterday, learned it yesterday for the first time, but I will teach it again for those that were not present yesterday. Take some time. So just below your belly button, you've got a muscle. It will get stronger as you learn this breath. Basically, you can move it back and forth like a cat, like a belly dancer. Um, your second chakra. As it gets stronger, this chakra represents security, stability, self-esteem, sense of self, self-worth, uh, sexuality, creativity. So this breath is about moving excess air out of our central channel. Uh, we're going to do it this time through our mouth. Sometimes we can do it through our nose. If anybody has ever gone to a Bikram class, Bikram teaches this at the end of this class. It's a great way to move toxins out of the body via the breath. So I'm just going to show you. And then uh, you jump in and follow. It is another breath that takes quite some time to learn, but just going with it is great. So um, this contracts in, and then we passively allow our diaphragm to recoil and the breath um, comes back in. We're not breathing in, we're just breathing out. So basically focus on having this um, kind of like, like a drum, like you're hitting in a drum almost and your breath is going out. So like that. Everybody try it. Okay. Now you're gonna go. So um, also you can adjust your shoulders, everything your body moves, your spine moves, your breathing. So adjust the spine. Okay, I'll go over this again. So yes. No. You can put your ear to your shoulder very gently. Ear to your shoulder very gently. Another way is you look over your shoulder very gently. No pulling, pushing, cracking. Forcing your spine will move on its own. Okay. So I'm going to start. We start by exhaling fully. Sip of water, go for it. This breath dries out your central channel. And I explained this yesterday. I'm going to explain it again. And I will explain it as long as it takes for people to realize that breathing can help heal your body. However, the wrong foods, the wrong diet can really do a lot of damage. Okay, so too much sugar. Fruit sugar is different. We do not want crappy sugar in our diet, okay? This is like sweets and treats and things like it's different to eat raspberries and strawberries when you're craving some sugar. Even have some real orange juice versus going and eating cake, okay? We don't want that kind of crap <laughs> in our diet, and I'll explain why. Too much fat. any alcohol really, um, smoking. What this does is it causes dampness through our central channel. And dampness, I, it's a word that is used in Ayurvedic medicine and it's used in ancient Chinese medicine. These are both very old medicines, thousands of years old. And, um, and we use it in naturopathic medicine as well. Um, and it's essentially like creating, well, too much dampness in the body. So if you go and take a towel and the towel is dry and you put it over your shoulders, you can dry out the body, warm up the body. 
soak that towel, put it over your shoulders, and all of a sudden you go, oh, this is heavy. I cannot believe how heavy a towel could be. This is the same with your entire digestive system, okay? So when you're constantly eating too much sugar, and this is crappy sugar, I'm not talking about real fruit. I'm talking about, I'm sorry to say it, but shitty food. North American diet, crap. Not a good thing. Too much fat, and we do need good fat, but I'm talking about high fat diets where we don't even realize how much fat we're taking in. Too much potato chips, too much fried foods, um, fast foods, any alcohol. Alcohol is extreme. Right? There's nothing good alcohol does for your body, straight up. There is absolutely nothing good that alcohol does for your body and smoking. And uh, what this does over time is it weighs us down. It can make us foggy thinking, lack of energy, fatigued, groggy, depressed. Literally, it can make us depressed. It can make us not assimilate our nutrients in our food properly. So we'll eat foods, but we're not actually getting the nutri nutrition we need. It can give us digestive problems. It can give us bowel problems. can give us anxiety um, and as, again your serotonin is produced in your fat so uh, depression and your gut health go very hand in hand okay so this breath dries that out but removing the actual causes of the problem which is too much sugar crappy sugar hydrogenated fats especially but too much fats period alcohol and smoking there's some other foods here and there but those are the main four so we're going to go back into this breath and do it a couple more times before this class is over okay so ready breathe in breathe out we start this breath with no breath in, with no breath in Through our nose. You will feel this very dried up in the throat. This breath can also help align the thyroid gland. And essentially, that's what happens to eating kind of shitty foods and getting dampness in your body it can get your thyroid out of balance too. It gives you a, hot, um, a low functioning thyroid body thyroid some people can get a goiter these are just other ways of describing this like this away from ease ease is health disease is you're away from ease when you're healthy everything's easy in your life your body's easy it's light when you're ill heavy, bogged down, weighted down, light gets heavy, stagnated, not a good thing. So we're gonna do this breath again. Swallow, breathe in, breathe out, We're ready to go. I'm going to end this class with another few ohms. You can tune in if you want to. 
If you don't feel comfortable with me on your own, you can hum, you can go that helps. However, the OM is A U M. It starts very much down here, goes and then it's very top of your head up here. Okay, so it always helps when there's like a class of a few people only together because then all our vibrations balance with each other, which is the universal frequency. We really connect with each other, but we can do this from afar. And what it does is it aligns all your energy within the center of the world, the divine center of God. We all have a light, the light source above us, and we connect to God, creator, all that is. traditional yoga is to sit in meditation and I'm going to continue to sit in meditation and I welcome you all to learn to train with me too like even if it's just two to five minutes so what we do is we just sit in silence no breath or no breath no no thought just presence sitting in a state of gratitude and peace and joy for those with Hashim to tune out of the class now, I thank you for joining. This class is by donation. Uh, e transfer is um, the best way. My email is akromanchuk at gmail.com. A K R O M A n c h u k at gmail.com i suggest a donation of ten dollars per class or a hundred dollars per month if you're going to be joining uh, several times over the month no donation is too big of course it's not too big right <laughs> but also too small if you only have a couple of dollars, that is also welcomed, and I'm so grateful and thankful. I truly teach this class because it's my passion. It's my purpose in this life. It is said in the Yogic Sutras that the soul will come back into life several times, and I have practiced yoga for several lifetimes. Um, this is not just this lifetime work of yoga practice. It's come from before, and I love it. Um, namaste means thank you. My highest self, my light, the light within me bows to the light within you. I always get to your head with that because it's so true. So sitting into meditation for those wishing to sit with me. 
and continue.
even just a few minutes of meditation every single day when people say it this one be me and this class will align with that we're going together five minutes at a time maybe ten minutes maybe some of us will sit for 15 to 20 minutes maybe we'll eventually get to a place where we sit for an hour if some of us have time after our breath meditation where the real healing and the real magic happens. So thank you. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. It's peace. And yum. Peace. Peace within, peace without. Namaste. Thank you.